Jy luister na Isaac Duplessy op Newspot. Good day and welcome to uh, Newspot. I have in my virtual studio, I have uh, Mr. Xavier Kasukuweru. Um, there will be 11 candidates running for the Zimbabwean presidency in the August election uh, this year. Um, after several hopefuls were disqualified for failing to raise the $20,000 needed to appear on the ba ballot. And uh, the election is, according to reports, um, uh, expected to pit um, incumbent Emerson Nangwagwa of uh, ZANU PF against pastor and lawyer Nelson Chamisa of the Citizens Coalition for Change. Um, he is, according to reports, um, the strongest challenger. But with me, I have, as I have said, um, uh, Xavier uh, Kasukuweru. He is a seasoned minister and uh, political commissar under the late former uh, uh, Robert Mugabe, president of uh, ZANU-PF, president of um, uh, Zimbabwe. And uh, uh, Mr. Kasuku Weri was under um, uh, self-imposed exile for a couple of years, but he says he's returning um, to Zimbabwe. He's going back, although there are threats of um, taking him into custody. And we're going to talk to him about his uh, candidacy and um, and 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 uh, all the other things developing around him. Good morning, Xavier. It's all right if I call you by name. Yes, Isaac. Sure, go ahead. Uh, we will do we will do the president thing once you win the election. Precisely. <laughs> Even after that, let's keep it on first name basis. I'd love it. Um, I, at um, if you win, then um, you will be the first president that I am on a first name basis with. <laughs> For sure. Don't use uh, ifs because it's a reality. It's going to okay. happen. <clears throat> Great, Xavier. Um, you've been part of um, uh, Mr. Mugabe's government. Um, uh, fell out of favor when Mr. Mnangagwa came um, uh, into office. Um, uh, just take us through that time. What happened there? There was also accusations of corruption. Um, uh, what is the story around that? Well, the whole um, 2017 episode was an Ill illegality. And I am sure everybody who has followed the Zimbabwean story will attest to the fact that Nangagwa rose to the top through none other than, uh, you know, uh, armed force to get to the top of our country. However, we now are going for an election on the 23rd of August. This election must restore Zimbabwe's legitimacy. We want an election that will, for, for the first time, everybody in the world will say, well done, Zimbabwe. You have held the election. We congratulate the winner. And we get our country back into the Committee of Nations. We get Zimbabwe out of its doldrums. We start to respect all our citizens as equals. We rebuild our economy. We become a responsible member of our SEDAC. We play our part in AU. But more importantly, we also start to address the economic malaise in our country and get our people stable, livelihoods, health and education, so that at least Zimbabwe can come out of these 20 or more years of uh, disturbances. Um, as I have said, according to reports, Mnangagwa and Chamisa remain the top contenders. That's according to reports. But uh, it is also reported that um, you as an independent candidate um, uh, is expected to uh, draw quite a bit of the votes and you can be uh, the, you can cause uh, quite a surprise in uh, the uh, election, um, but there are complications um, with you returning to Zimbabwe. In fact, uh, there were stories that uh, that uh, the police were waiting for you on the uh, at the airport at one stage, and you had to return to South Africa. What is the situation there now? Are you going to be uh, jailed? Um, and if so, will you be able to go back and fight um, 
the uh, election from within Zimbabwe? As that I'm going to Zimbabwe to participate in the elections. There is no intimidation, no threat, no blackmail that will stop me. Zimbabwe is my country. I was born and bred in Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe I shall die and in Zimbabwe I shall be buried. I'm going to this election because we've got to fix our country. Now all the attempts, all the antics will not stop. The winds of change are going to blow across Zimbabwe for the first time. And Mnangagwa is aware. Hence, he now wants to resort to all these intimidatory tactics. We've heard that for the past 30, 40 years when he was Minister of Security. It can't fly again. We need a legitimate leader of Zimbabwe who is chosen by the people of Zimbabwe. We are not going to give him that room. He might have a few days to think around. Even if he puts me in prison for the next two months, I'll be the first president out of prison. I will be inaugurated straight from Chikurubi into State House. We've got to break this binary. We've got to break these divisions. We've got to break this toxicity. We need our people to have their freedoms. We need the stability. We need to fight crime in our country. We need to fight corruption, which has cancer. Ever since President Mugabe left, it has now become worse. And is at the helm of this very serious cancer that mm. has now prevailed our society. The country is not a personal fiefdom of an individual. It does not belong to his family. It is a national resource. It is for all of us as Zimbabweans. Now, I go back very clear in my mind that I have no legal head hanging over my head. My head. I am going in to fight and win. I am going in because I am a Democrat. What happened in 2017 cannot happen again. We want a Zimbabwe where we unite all the people. The irony is um, that uh, Mr. Mnangagwa um, uh, took over exactly for the reasons that you just called out, um, uh, being tired for, uh, uh, about the corruption and everything else, and now he's in exactly the same position, uh, being uh, uh, accused of, uh, of, of, of corruption. Well, he is... I'm sure he can answer for himself in terms of corruption and his failure to deliver. There is nobody who had greater, great, greater goodwill than Nangagwa. He squandered it. He had the whole world eating out of his hands. People were prepared to give him a chance. But what did he do? What did he do? What has he done? Can, what can he show us for the past five years? He can't use intimidation and threats as the only currency to his leadership. That is what we are putting to a stop. That is what we are saying. No, 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 not again. You come from, as you see, uh, uh, you come from uh, from ZANU PF. You come from the government, uh, but that can also be um, uh, uh, the the problem um, hampering you uh, in that um, uh, it is exactly this party under the leadership uh, of your previous. Um, uh, president that brought uh, the people of Zimbabwe where they are? Isaac, yes, indeed. Nangagwa was with Mugabe for over 50 years. He served from 1980 as a minister. Now, immediately, he is tired. You can tell. We disqualify him. I became a minister in 2009 alongside with Nelson Chamisa. We were government ministers together from day one. So all of us have been in government. Now, what is going to define us is what policy positions are we proffering? What programs are we talking about? How do we look at the vision of Zimbabwe? Where are the divisions and how do we resolve those divisions? The vision were clear. I come with a very clear mandate from the people who have asked me to get involved in the campaign, but also with a very clear background I have fought all the corruption charges because they don't, they were not there. They were bases for our Mugabe was sake. And I challenged the system, flew back into Harare on two or three occasions and was acquitted on all accounts. Now, as we go into this election, don't talk about Nangagwa. I think Nangagwa now deserves to go to the retirement home 
At 85 years old, we can't expect much. We need new energies to get Zimbabwe out of it. We need somebody who can work up and give a good day's work from 5 a.m. in the morning. We are at that stage where we need energies to resolve the myriad of challenges our people are facing. Those who are expired, those who are tired, those who must be retired, must be retired on time. What will you do differently um, to give um, the people of uh, Zimbabwe back their, um, their self-respect, um, uh, being a country, being a nation, with so much wealth available exactly. to them? Um, what will you do differently? Isaac, an economic architecture, macroeconomic stability. Let's get the economy working. Every man, every woman wants economic stability. Every family wants stability. The first thing that we must crack on, and for the next five years, my agenda is not political. My agenda is economic. We need to restore Zimbabwe's economic capacity and prowess. Zimbabwe can do it. Let's fix our mining. Let there be responsible mining. Let us ensure that the results of our hard work in the mining sector permeates in our society. If we say we have turned over $12 billion per annum from our resources, that should be seen in the streets of our country. That should be seen on the tables in the homesteads of our people. Second, let's finalize the agricultural question. Let's give our people title. Let's complete this process so that anybody who invests on land is certain about the future. Let's get on to talk to the world and engage the world, close the gaps. We owe the world a lot of money. Let's close that division. Let's fight against the sanctions. Let's engage the world. But it also starts with us having a behavioral pattern that will ensure that the world says, we understand Zimbabweans. Mm -hmm. A United people can overcome sanctions. Those three, four points I've put across to you will ultimately bring about stability. We are an embarrassment to ourselves. Our parents have sent to spend a huge amount of money educating children, and those children are doing nothing. They are either selling uh, potatoes in the streets. They are either working as waiters, degreed children. It can be correct, and that can be right. Mm -hmm. Zimbabwe can do much better. Now, we don't want this stifling of potential. This is what we are standing up against. This is what we are saying. These kind of ideas that stifle, the stifle the growth and development for our people cannot be accepted anymore. Zimbabwe should now embrace the capacity we have. Zimbabwe should now give our young people an opportunity to succeed in their fields of endeavor. That's what I promise Zimbabweans, with stability, stability, and stability. Now, going into Zimbabwe, uh, you will have to fight an election. Uh, what will your strategy be to convince uh, Zimbabweans that you are their man? Well, Zimbabweans know Tyson. They know me. That uh, I punch hard. I want this Zimbabwe that works. We have said to the people, each and every homestead, share the noise, share the messages. One family to the next, let them discuss. Is this August 23 a lost opportunity or a moment for us to reclaim our power? 23rd August is a day for Zimbabweans to decide for the next five years their future. If they put their eggs on the wrong box, they will have to live with it for the next five years. And I doubt that they're going to do that. We need a new beginning. We need a new deal for our people. And this is what I'm offering. So we are going to campaign hard across the country in the mountains and valleys of Zimbabwe. We'll take the message to each and every crane and nook and crane of our country. We'll get the message there. Uh, Al Jazeera um, uh, made a documentary available the other day um, uh, sketching how uh, especially Mnangagwa and a few other uh, senior politicians in Zimbabwe and business people are part of uh, uh, a, an illegal gold trade and uh, other corrupt activities. Are those uh, the type of things that you will try to get rid of? No, we certainly we cannot accept this. I mean, this is just one 
is a you know the tip of the iceberg. There is a lot that is happening. What Al Jazeera say is a pittance to what is happening. Zimbabwe is a crime scene. There is theft, the left, right, and center. From the day one, they have been stealing. From day one, you know the riots of 2019, when fuel just went up in the morning. People are stealing, and that is continuing. It's like possessed people. They are, it's, 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 it's you know, theft on steroids. They, you can't believe it. It's, it's amazing how people can expect the country to survive with this kind of theft. A country with so much great resource and so much potential has been reduced to penury. Our people are living in abject poverty. Water in the townships has now become a rare scale commodity. You now have a government build or going to drill boreholes in urban centers. Wait a minute, what are we doing? You are taking the urban centers to the Stone Age, drilling boreholes in the urban centers. What has happened to purified water, to water coming out of our dams? Let's invest in more dams. Let's invest in the infrastructure. Let's upgrade our water systems. Let's get things done correctly. We have what it takes to succeed. But look at the chaos, the corruption, the gold mafia, the century report. There are so many, so many acts of corruption, some unforgivable. Mr. Xavier Kasukuwere, thank you very much for talking to us. Uh, all the best for you uh, and your co campaign. I will be um, having a special look at it, especially uh, for my privilege to be uh, w that I will be able uh, to be on a first name basis with the president. Uh, Isaac, thank you very much. And thank you very much to the listeners. God bless Africa. Jij luister na Isaac Duplessis op Nieuwspot.